On the pavement, I found a lot of this yellow stuff over here, um, and uh, this has been washed uh, off by the rain. I think uh, that these might be pollen. Um, I'll collect a sample of this, and then I'll have a close look uh, at it under the microscope. Unfortunately, I forgot my tools at home, so I have to scratch off uh, some material just like this. Well, um, the pollen were a little bit difficult to separate uh, from, uh, from the ground because they were sticking together. Um, when the water evaporated, the rainwater evaporated, uh, it caused the pollen to stick together. So a little bit of the, the material, uh, some material from the ground was also collected, but that's, uh, that's okay. So you can see it here in close-up again. And a few days later, um, I went on a hike. And sure enough, I did find some spruce trees there. And you can see the yellow pollen dust flying away. As a matter of fact, 2018 was a very strong year uh, concerning uh, pollen production. And if you were hitting the, the trees uh, with a stick, you can see there are large numbers, uh, large amounts of pollen are flying away here. And yeah, in some areas I read it was so strong that it almost looked like fog. So, and now I actually try to do something uh, different. I have got uh, a slide here with uh, a so-called depression, in, in this case two depressions. So they're concave. If you want to jump directly here to the microscopy, you have to skip ahead to 3 minutes 54. And what I did here is, is using a CD and a fidget spinner, I made myself a slide ringing table. And in this depression of the slide, I'm going to put the pollen and then I'm going to use some nail polish uh, to glue the cover glass um, on top. And uh, yeah, so that's uh, what I'm doing. I'm using some blue nail polish, blue being a very fa favorite color of mine. Uh, usually you would probably use clear nail polish or black nail polish. But what I did is I diluted the nail polish uh, with acetone, quite a bit of acetone as a matter of fact. Yeah, and I applied a ring of, uh, of nail polish and then I applied the, the pollen in, into the concave part of the slide. And uh, I uh, then uh, placed the cover glass on top and the nail polish was uh, gluing the cover glass uh, to the slide. And I used uh, the, a slide with a depression simply to make sure that the pollen is not uh, compressed too much. And then I've, I wanted to stabilize everything a little bit more, uh, so I added some more nail polish on the side and I allowed the nail polish to be drawn in um, beneath uh, the cover glass. Uh, so it was because it was so fluid and so liquid, it was actually uh, drawn in uh, due to capillary action. It was actually pulled in and this also added a little bit more stability um, to the cover glass. Um, I think one of the disadvantages of using a concave slide is, is that they're a little bit expensive, uh, but um, I wanted to give it a try anyway. Yeah, so this is basically how it looked like. Uh, not very nice, I have to admit, uh, but it did work. And for simply cosmetic reasons, simply to make it look nicer, I then decided to scratch off the excess uh, nail polish with a sharp knife. Um, not really necessary, but I simply wanted to make it appear a little bit nicer. So. It's also part of the hobby to make things <laughs> look nice. Um, here are some examples of uh, making spacer rings. So these are just regular slides. Um, I'm going to do a separate video on this as well. Yeah, and then I put everything under the microscope. And uh, of course you switch on the light of the microscope. And now let's get started with uh, some Paul microscopy. That is under the 4x low power um, objective. You can see all of the dark, uh, large, uh, Parts, I think that's some dirt and dust, but the pollen itself uh, looks kind of small. Um, so um, also with uh, the backlight, uh, the contrast uh, is now a little bit higher because I now closed the diaphragm. And yeah, and uh, next higher magnification. And we already start to see a little bit more structure, uh, pollen structure, but it's not really exciting what you see. Um, there's still a lot of details missing and you can also see you know, occasionally there is some, I think the string-like structure seems to be some kind of dust that um, I also collected. Yeah, again, closing the condenser diaphragm, opening it again and you can see that the contrast also changes. This is now at the same magnification using a dark field patch stop and now the pollen appear to be bright on dark background. So this is a, also a nice contrasting technique. And you can still see that there is not only pollen here, but there are again a little bit of contaminants uh, because collected uh, everything from the street. 
but that is okay as I mentioned uh, you can still see that uh, the pollen have a, a yellowish color and uh, when you open the diaphragm a little bit uh, you can see that uh, there is a little bit it's more blurred bl blown out the highlights a little bit overexposed because the camera also does some exposure adjustment and it's getting confused if the background is too dark a little bit so it tends to overexpose the pollen a little bit. I'm, I'm using now the fine focus knob uh, to focus uh, through the different layers. Yeah, and uh, yet at a higher magnification in dark field uh, that is using the 20x um, objective. And the depth of field is now quite low, low already so I have to uh, work all the time with uh, the fine focus knob. Um, and this, this is actually, it can be seen as an advantage or disadvantage, the fact that I'm using a concave slide because the pollen are not flat anymore, uh, but they're stacked on top of each other. And the resolution is also low because I'm not using a mounting medium. Um, and uh, pollen, however, are often mounted in a so-called dry mount like this one here. Because if I add water right now as a mounting medium, uh, then um, the pollen start to swell up a little bit. So that's again using the 4x uh, objective in dark field. And then I decided to try something uh, different. Uh, I switched off the light of the microscope and I used my desk lights uh, and I was applying some light. Uh, for, I'm using top illumination. And this is now the low power 4X uh, objective and now it looks like a stereo microscope. Yeah, I'm playing around with the lamp a little bit. I'm adding now a second lamp. And yeah, um, and you can see it almost looks a little bit three-dimensional like a stereo microscope and this is because uh, the light is coming from the top and there are also some uh, the individual pollen grains can also be seen a little bit better because they're casting a little shadow and you can also see much better that they're stacked on top of each other and uh, you can also see some um, other uh, dark uh, I think it's tar tarmac from the road the dark uh, pieces uh, that you see now uh, string like structured dust okay uh, the disadvantage with uh, top illumination is that that you can only use it with low power. This is now the 10x objective. This also still works uh, reasonably fine. Um, you can um, also focus uh, using the fine focus knob and uh, uh, scan through the different layers. Uh, but this was pretty much it already because if you go up uh, with the magnification still further, uh, then the distance between the objective and the slide is uh, so small that the objective starts to cast a shadow and then it's not possible for the light uh, to reach uh, the specimen in, anymore, like in this case. So that's the next higher magnification and you can see it's already quite dark. Um, yeah. Okay, so um, I think I'm going to call it quits now. Um, I wish you a nice day and happy pollen microscopy, happy microbe hunting. Bye-bye.